Hello and welcome to Brand Management, the show that explores the history of your favorite brand mascots. Today we take a look at Jack in the Box. In 1941, Robert Oscar Peterson opened his first restaurant, Topsy's Drive-In, in San Diego, California. Topsy's, later renamed Oscar's, was a traditional style drive-in restaurant. Throughout the 1940s, Oscars expanded to include several restaurants across Southern California. Oscars restaurants featured a starry-eyed clown named Oscar as their mascot, who prominently appeared on their signs and menus. At the beginning of the 1950s, Robert Peterson was working on a new restaurant which would implement the drive through system recently popularized by In-N-Out Burger. In 1951, the very first Jack in the Box restaurant was opened in San Diego. Continuing the clown theming from Oscars, the new restaurant featured a giant Jack in the Box on its roof. The Jack in the Box restaurant revolutionized the drive through industry by adding a two-way intercom, which allowed customers to order their food before arriving at the window. The intercom systems featured the restaurant's mascot over a sign that informed guests, Jack will speak to you. The Jack mascot wasn't always portrayed consistently as could be seen in print ads, which sold the restaurant as fine dining. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, Jack in the Box restaurants expanded across California and the Southwest. During this time, the chain's mascot, Jack, remained simply on signs and intercoms. Though, he did appear in one noteworthy commercial that pitched the restaurant's convenience. You know, the nice thing about going to a jack-in-the-box, you don't have to get all dressed up. The 1970s saw the first major developments of the Jack character. Jack the Clown was introduced as a new version of the company's mascot. This version of Jack was portrayed with a human body and a spherical head resembling that of the drive thru Jack appeared on a variety of signage and merchandise for the company, including name tags, ketchup packets, and his own version of the drive through Following McDonald's and Burger King's successes in extending their kids' meal marketing, Jack the Clown was given his own extended universe of characters. Der Hamburger Meister was an older German man who represented the restaurant's hamburgers. Small Fry was a child who represented the fries. The Secret Sauce Agent was a mysterious figure who protected the recipe of the secret sauce. The Onion Ring Thing was an anthropomorphic onion ring with a large sense of humor. And the Shakes were a trio of characters who represented the three varieties of milkshakes. The Jack in the Box Bunch, as they were called, could be seen in animated commercials. Jack winds up, and here's the pitch. Was it a ball or a strike? It's <laughs> just a good question. I'll never tell. It's a secret. <laughs> now Small Fry really connects. It's a beautiful drive. Right through onion ring thing. Ooh, right through my ring thing. The three shakes are on it. I got it! I got it! I got it! Small Fry is rounding third. It's going to be close. Is he safe or is he out? <laughs> hey! They could also be purchased as a variety of merchandise, including an inflatable box ball, collectible cups, and a collection of bendable toys. Jack in the Box released a trio of comic book and record combos, which followed the bunch on different adventures. Each record 
featured the voice of Paul Winchell, who was best known as the voice of Tigger on Winnie the Pooh. In Why a House Makes Noise, Jack and the Onion Ring Thing visit Jack's Uncle Trilby and learn why his old house makes creepy noises. In Where Oil Comes From, Jack and the Bunch learn how oil is mined and the importance of its conservation. And in How Pain Helps Us, the Bunch learn the value of pain after the Hamburger Meister drops a bowling ball on his foot. Unfortunately, these characters, including Jack himself, didn't stick around much longer. The Burger Wars of the late 70s and early 80s saw McDonald's and Burger King competing to be America's favorite fast food restaurant. Jack in the Box decided to avoid the battle by ignoring the family market and trying to attract older yuppie customers. So, in 1980, Jack in the Box ditched their Jack mascot by literally blowing him up in a commercial. The food is better at the box. Waste it. The food is better at the box. Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box saw success throughout the early 1980s as they remodeled their restaurants and upscaled their menus. In 1985, the chain's owner, Ralston Purina, took a bold step by renaming the restaurants as Monterey Jack's. The Monterey Jack Burger, only at Monterey Jack's. The name change was a marketing disaster, and the Jack in the Box name was returned only a few months later. With the original name back, the Jack in the Box chain succeeded throughout the 1980s. But, all of that would come to an end in the early 1990s. He's huge! He's famished! He's the incredibly hungry man! I'm so hungry! In 1992, Jack in the Box introduced the Monster Burger. Later renamed as the Colossus, the burger featured two quarter pound patties, three slices of cheese, and eight strips of bacon. Due to the high demand for the burgers and the unusual size of the beef patties, the burgers were being served to customers without having been cooked properly. This led to a widespread outbreak of E. coli, which infected over 700 people and took four lives. The crisis led to upgraded FDA requirements for the handling of raw meat. After settling all of its lawsuits out of court, Jack in the Box was left nearly bankrupt and was desperate to reshape their image. Advertising executive Rick Siddig proposed an idea for a new Jack mascot. Siddig already had experience creating beloved brand mascots as he had created the Energizer Bunny a few years prior. Siddig's idea was for a character named Jack Box, who was the ousted founder of the Jack in the Box company. Hello, I'm Jack, founder of Jack in the Box. Perhaps you remember when I was fired. The Jack's Bat campaign followed Jack as he returned to the company who had blown him up over a decade prior. Jack asserted himself as the new CEO and took his revenge on the board members. Siddig himself not only directed the commercial, but voiced the character of Jack, a role he would play for the next 20 years. The campaign was a massive success and helped steer the company's image away from the E. coli controversy. Jack continued appearing in commercials, which normally showed him working to further develop the company. Jack was often portrayed as an everyman who could be spotted bonding with customers. As the commercials continued, we met Jack's family. Jack's wife Cricket is a normal human woman who doesn't share any of Jack's clown-like features. Though their son Jack Jr. did inherit his father's looks. 
We eventually met Jack's parents, and even paid a visit to his family reunion, where we met more of the extended box family. Wow, there is such a strong family resemblance. Yeah, we all got Nana Box's nose. <laughs> The Jack character has frequently been released on merchandise throughout the years. This includes such items as bendy toys, Pez dispensers, and bobbleheads. In 1995, Jack in the Box released Jack as an antenna topper. These were a massive success and have continued being released for holidays and special occasions. Over the years, Jack's commercials have shown him running for president, leading a rock band, and even ending up in a coma. In 2015, after 20 years and over 400 commercials, Jack and the Box severed their ties with Rick Sittig. Even without his creator, Jack continues strong. The Jack's Back campaign is now considered one of the longest-running advertising campaigns of all time. Jack is a unique brand mascot, one whose company tried to get rid of him, but ultimately he saved that company from complete disaster. Jack appears to be here to stay, but if they ever try to get rid of him, they might want to remember what happened the last time. Thank you for watching the latest episode of Brand Management. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe.